first key is making sure that's our uh, structural column and a structural framing plan. And the second one is to make sure when you use the coping tool, you select column first and then the beam, not the beam and then the column. To process that, if you are using Revit, if you're using BIM, every single design team should be doing this. I've got a lot of my architect friends out there. You are actually the ones who need to hear this more than anything. But right. keeping, even if you draft everything, you should still keep the model on in the view. Exactly. I guess I'll just, I'll read out the question first, which had to do with timber, timber post, post and beam type of framing. But I mean, honestly, I think it's also just regular framing, depending on what you're doing, like with decks and stuff. A lot of times we'll do mm -hmm. six by six and do notched, notched calm stuff. So <laughs> long story short, the question has to do with taking a big column and uh, putting beams on top of it and then notching, notching the, yep. the beams out, right. Or notching yep, the column exactly. to sit on the beams. Yep. I think you even put an image there, right? So everyone can did, see. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's Paul's, there's Paul's image. <laughs> so, so depending on what the end goal is, there's different ways to approach this, but um, if you're using wood and wood only, um, mm -hmm. it's actually pretty simple. Um, unless there's very finite ways you want to notch the column. Obviously, if, if it's very, there's the, if you want full control over the notch and not be pushed by the, the beams, then you're going to have to model a void into the column yeah. family, right? Mm -hmm. and, and turn sure. it on and off or do the rotate thing or flip or whatever, you know, there's different ways to do voids or maybe do a, a posit, but either way. But the cool thing is um, in uh, in Revit uh, with the structural tools, um, you can actually do it automatically as long as you're using a column, a structural column and a, a structural beam. And so, um, so here's... Okay. Here's the example here. We've got, this is just a two by 10. So these are out of the box structure. You can't see my screen, right? Sorry, before I jump in. Yeah, we can. Okay. So we've got a, a two by 10 um, here and we've got a timber frame, a timber column, eight by eight. So it's just out of the box stuff. Um, so coping um, is actually, will work here, which is really cool. Um, you just have to do the order, right? So if I do this, if I do the beam first and hit the column, it's going to do that. Which when you talk about coping, that's usually the case is there's some version of that. But if you hit the coping tool, you hit the column first and then the beam, it actually does that. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, the column first and then the beam. And then from there, <clears throat> uh, what's pretty cool the is there's an offset right here, mm -hmm. coping distance. See that? I don't think it can be zero. Let me see. Can it? You can on metal when I do steel. Oh, it can. Steel, it can. So. Okay. Yeah, it can. Um, so, so now you can see it's actually right it's doing exactly what you were yep. thinking. Um, and then well, I think I the have same applies. Column then. I, bet, I bet that's my problem. Mm, probably. Yeah, that might be it. I think it has to be structural for coping to work. Um, so let me just copy this over and you can see it even, well, it's sorry, I didn't because I didn't have a cope this one. So now, you know, obviously if we have two, you mm -hmm. have to cope from here to here. And now you can see now it's coped by that guy. Okay. Right. So, yeah. I, I mean, if you want, let's test it real quick. Let's uh, let's throw in an uh, architectural column. You think you might have an architectural column, right? I think I was open. Although no way, because yeah. timber comes in here. But uh, let's, well, let's just see. Let's do like. Uh, I guess we could try a rectangular column. Oh no, I'm still in structure. Was I still in structural? Yeah, I was still in structural. Sorry. <clears throat> let's yep, this one. it's an architectural column. It won't pick yeah. up on the coping tool. Yeah. Yep, I think I, I have a feeling that is the case. So, so I guess you probably assume maybe the coping tool should have worked, but it didn't. <laughs> so that mm -hmm. let's just see. I'm curious now because I, I don't think it's gonna. If I hit coping, if it's gonna let me do that, right? It won't. It cope, won't let you select yeah, the column. It's not even letting me select it, right? So it has mm -hmm. to be architectural. I mean, yeah. uh, structural. Sorry for that to work. But once it's there, it does work, and it works pretty well too. Which I don't know if it does a a three. It does. Cool. I wasn't sure if it did that. So it actually, I mean, you could see it actually copes it, yes. you know, however you need, which is, which is really cool. But the key, and so, there's, so I guess there's two keys there, right? <laughs> so, so, uh, so the, the first key is making sure that's our uh, structural column and a structural framing plan. And the second one is to make sure when you use the coping tool, you select column first and then the beam, not the beam and then the column. Yep. And that'll slice and dice it however you want. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was an easy one.